my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my removal, nail prep, and fill with builder gel. I have already done an extension on my index finger. I'll put that video up in the cards. Um, so I'm only going to be working on my other four fingers today. I will be using Sally Hansen's cuticle remover and then from Virgo and Gem I'll be using their base coat, their liquid builder gel, and their top coat. I will Oh, you can also use an IBD hard gel or any kind of a hard gel in a jar with a brush if you like. I will use my files. I will also use my e-file, which is a nail drill. I will use my glass cuticle pusher. This one I got from Maniology. I love it a lot. It also has a pointy end with a glass file on it. I will use my regular cuticle pusher and probably my hollow taco glass file as well and my handy dandy finger prep or prop finger prop here is my melody susie dust collector it's awesome and this is also my melody susie e-file so i will be using this um, extra fine cone shaped ceramic bit I really like ceramic bits especially for removal I think they work great um, one thing to note when you're working with an e-file is um, the faster you have it going the less work you have to do so if you're going really slow you're it's more likely that you're going to have to actually push down um, in order to get it to do what you want it to do and that's actually counterproductive to what you want. Um, if it's going a little bit faster, then you actually very barely touch the surface of your nail and it will do all the work for you. You can also do any kind of filing with a buffer or a file, just a hand file. You don't have to have an e-drill or an e-file for this. Um, I like to use it when I'm actually taking some of the bulk off, which is what I'm doing here today. So what I am doing is I'm going around the edges and making sure I don't have any lifting and making sure that it's nice and flush up to my natural nail. I'm not drilling on my natural nail. It might look like it a little bit, but that tip, it doesn't really drill at all. It might get a little tiny bit of the... Um, cuticle the dead skin a little bit but it's it's not really doing anything at all on my natural nail so I'm also going to be taking a little bit of the bulk off this time because I did have some growth and it has been a couple of fills since I have done that normally um, if I'm not taking bulk off I would just take a buffer and just get any kind of shine the top coat shine I would just take that off and just go in and make sure I don't have any lifting or anything. I want to make sure I take care of any kind of lifting. You do not want to get moisture in between your product and your nail. You could get a greenie that way. So once I get all of the shine buffed off or drilled off or the bulk drilled off, whichever is your goal for that particular mani, um, then you can go in with your nail prep. So far I have left everything at real time. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just for the sake of time, but you can see it really didn't take me very long to take bulk off and to remove that shine just off that one finger. Um, so I only have three more fingers to go, so I will fast forward a little bit and just let you sit back, relax, and watch me work.
As I said earlier, you don't have to use an e-file or a drill to do this part. You can totally just use your normal um, nail file or buffer block. All you really need to do is get that shine off and kind of clean up the area closest to your cuticle just to make sure it blends into your nail and you're getting rid of any kind of lifting. So right now, I am going to go in with my Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. I just take a little bit after I shake it up and just put it around the cuticle and the sidewalls of all my fingers. Now what this does is it softens up that dead skin and makes it really, really quick and easy to remove. Okay, now that that has sat on my fingers for about 10 to 15 seconds, I'm going in with my metal cuticle pusher and I'm very gently just running it along the edges of my skin and I am also kind of scraping very gently um, on that cuticle and getting any of the dead skin that might be stuck to my natural nail off. This is... Um, this stuff works really, really well. I never have to use cuticle nippers to cut any of my skin um, off. The only time I ever use those is if I have a hangnail that I need to get off. And honestly, I haven't had a hangnail in a really long time because I'm very, very diligent about using my cuticle remover and also my cuticle oil daily multiple times daily I like to use my cuticle oil so this step actually doesn't take very long at all and it's excellent for removing all of that dead skin and making your nails and your cuticle area look very clean and healthy Once I'm done with that, I wipe off my tool and I wipe off all of my fingers and then I go in with my glass cuticle pusher and this will get any straggling bits of dead skin that might be on your nail that just might not have been caught up with the cuticle remover and the drill. And I also like to push back my cuticles as well. This kind of makes my um, nail beds a little bit longer and gives me some more nail to play with and then I'll take the pointy end and I kind of go around and Just clean that edge up some just a little bit more I just want to make sure I get all that dead skin off. I don't want any dead skin remaining because dead skin is what causes lifting that and oily cute um, oily nail beds will also do that as well but the worst lifting comes from the dead skin that wasn't removed prior to putting product over it. Once I'm finished with that, I went and washed my hands with Dawn dish soap and a nail brush and really got all those extra oils off. Now I'm gonna go in with my Sparkling Co. Prep step and basically this is just a dehydrator and you only need to put it on your natural nail so if you already have product on your nails you only just need to put it around the edge where there is natural nail exposed then i will use this young nails protein bond um, this stuff it really helps to adhere the product to your nails and you don't have to put it over the whole thing. You can just put it over just the natural nail part. I did put it over my whole thing, my whole nail. Um, I, I had a little bit too much product on the brush and it flooded a little bit. So I wiped that off. And then I'm gonna finish with all the rest of the nails. It's a tiny, tiny brush. You really don't need very much at all. Um, if you have really oily nail beds, you might want to use a second coat. Uh, one coat works just well for me, um, so I don't need to do more than that. But I am putting it all over the entire nail, which is okay. Um, it's meant to work with gel products. As I understand it, uh, there are people who do use it with their dip liquids, their dip products as well. Um, but it is made for gels. 
I've completed that, I'm going to go in with my Virgo and Gem base coat and I'm going to apply that to all of my nails. I use this base coat because I want to make sure to provide a protective barrier to my natural nail, but I also use it to adhere the builder gel so that it won't lift. That kind of helps in conjunction with the protein bond and the prep step um, which I think I started to say is a dehydrator and you can make your own it's I believe a mixture of acetone and alcohol and I'm sure you can look up a recipe online um, for that if you wanted to make your own it's super easy I just have always had a bottle on hand so I don't worry about that someday I'll make my own though I think when I run out Anyway, so I am on my last finger um, for the base gel. And once I'm done applying that, I will cure it in an LED or UV lamp. The LED doesn't take as long. That will be about 30 seconds. A UV lamp would be about a minute. That that's cured I'm gonna go in with my liquid builder gel now liquid builder gel is basically the same thing as gel polish only it's clear and it's thicker you could use the IBD or a builder gel in a jar with a brush um, for my fills I feel like the ones with the brush um, in a bottle are just so much easier to work with when I'm building extensions I do like the hard gel um, with the from the jar with a with a paintbrush um, or a, an application brush just because they're easier to work with they're even thicker than what the builder gel that I'm using here um, is and so they're easier to build extensions with so what I'm doing is I'm, I painted it on the entire nail and then I put a little bit of extra in that center section and holding it upside down to level it and let gravity pull the builder gel down into a natural apex. You have to kind of be careful how you hold your finger if you have it tilted to the side your apex will um, pull down to the side and then it won't be even and you'll have more filing so as long as you're careful with how you hold it upside down it will level out super smooth and your apex will already be built for you and there won't be hardly anything for you to do other than just buff it once you're done applying so in between each of these nails, I have only gone in and just done a little bit of a flash cure. So by flash cure, I mean I put it in my lamp for 10 seconds. And what that does is it just kind of holds that gel in place so that it's not going to go anywhere or flood or um, move around on me. So. Um, with this nail, I felt after holding it upside down that I didn't have quite enough of an apex built, so I put a tiny bit more on, and now I'm holding it upright because my apex was too far forward towards my free edge, and I wanted the apex to be built a little bit further back towards my cuticle, and so I held my finger up just a little bit just to move that natural apex backwards a little bit that's one of the reasons why i love this liquid builder gel so much it is so easy to work with and just playing around with moving your finger and holding it upside down and you get it perfectly level and you get these beautiful apex built and it's just the easiest stuff and it provides strength on your natural nail so if I didn't have time to go in for a mani right after this, as soon as I finished with my buffing and filing and my top coat, I could just go about my day. I could go and run some errands and come back and do my mani later. Or I can just 
go with naked nails, but they would be strong naked nails. My natural nails are so thin and flimsy, and they have been my entire life. They, <laughs> funny story, my kids when they were really little used to like to sit on the couch with me and watch TV, and they would always grab onto my hands, and they would just play with bending my fingernails and it doesn't hurt because my fingernails are so super thin but now that they're older and I have more time on my hands they're a little bit more self-sufficient I like to do my nails and um, having strong nails means I can have long nails and build your gel really provides me with that extra bit of strength and also I do the gel method. So um, when you're doing dip powders with the gel method, you do get a certain amount of strength, but it isn't as strong as dip liquids. So having this base of builder gel really helps build up that strength so that I don't have to worry about them breaking so much or bending Okay, so now that I finished applying all of that, I did cure it fully for one minute in the lamp, and now I am removing the tacky layer with an alcohol-soaked lint-free wipe. This is because I don't want my files to get gunked up. This file is my favorite buffing file. It's a 100 by 180 grit flex file, and it's is so comfortable for buffing. So I'm using the rough side to start with and really all I'm doing is just getting it evened out. If there are any spots that were not even, um, you know, then this is the place where I would go and make sure that my shaping is right as far as um, where my apex is and how it blends at the cuticle line and the sidewalls. And then I'll go in with the softer side like I'm doing right now. And I will buff that up a little bit and that smooths that out even more. And so it's super soft and shiny and smooth. Well, not shiny, but super smooth. So then I wipe everything off. So I, I went ahead and cut out the other fingers just for the sake of time and afterwards I'm just taking off all of that dust that I created. I could have used my um, dust collector. I didn't because there's very little buffing that I needed to do. So I wiped all that off and now I'm going back in with another coat of base coat. Um, I probably could go straight into a top coat if I wanted to. I like to make sure that I have um, a base coat just so I can make sure I'm not going to get any peeling. Now I flooded my sidewall there a little bit and I like these orange wood sticks for kind of cleaning up that uh, flooding along the edge. Those work really great for that. Um, and then I'll finish up with the other nails and get that base coat on. Um, another thing you could do, you really could go straight into a mani right after the builder gel phase. You don't have to do a base coat and a top coat. I do because I don't always have time to do my mani right away and I want to make sure it's um, protected. I also usually do because I use peel base and I like to have the peel base on a super shiny surface so I like to have the top coat. And I always put a top coat over a base coat 100% of the time. I just always do that way I'm guaranteed I'm not going to get any uh, peeling of my top coat. So, um, like I said, you could go straight into a mani right after the builder gel, after you have filed and buffed that. Um, and then when you go to remove, you would just file off or soak off. Um, this liquid builder gel uh, from Virgo and Gem is HEMA free and it is soak off. So you can soak it off. So usually if you're going to use 
this kind and not the hard gel. The hard gel that I showed you in that bottle of IBD is not a soak off builder gel. So you could soak off your dip manicure using the IBD. If you were to soak off using this, you will soak off your builder gel as well. And for me, that kind of defeats the purpose. So here, I, I don't know if I said it, I'm going in with my top coat right now. Um, but let's see, what where, where was I? <laughs> I? I like to get distracted. I'm like, squirrel. Okay, um, so like I was saying, you could go in and do a full dip mini right after. Um, but if you were to do that, I would suggest either using peel base or um, making sure that you file off. Um, your Manny rather than soak off with acetone. I hate soaking off with acetone. I really, really, really hate it. So having this base builder gel layer and something to file down to is just awesome for me. And then I change my Manny's a lot. So I like to use the peel base. But if I'm going on vacation and I don't want them to accidentally pop off while I'm gone, then I for sure will skip the peel base. And then when I get home and I'm ready for a new Manny, then I just take my file, my drill, my handy dandy extra fine cone ceramic drill bit and file it off. And here's the finished Manny. Now I'm gonna go in with my Vanilla Chai Candy Skin Care Cuticle Oil. I got this in the scent bar. All I did was order the size that I wanted and tell her the scent that I wanted, and she made it for me. She is awesome, love CJ. Okay, so once that's rubbed in, my next step for myself is to put my Unt peel base on and then go on with the rest of my mani. And there it is. Did you think I nailed it? I sure hope so and I hope that you found that this video was helpful for you and if you liked it please click the like button, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, let me know what you want to see, let me know what you like. I'd love to take some requests and give you what you want to see. Thanks! Bye!